Good afternoon, everyone. This is a webcast from the Water Research Foundation on a pepper mild mottle virus, a plant pathogen with a greater purpose in microbial water quality analysis. This is one of a series of our partnership webcasts. Next slide. Before we get started, I'd like to go over some housekeeping items. Please submit your questions through the Q question box at any time. We'll do a Q&A near the end of the webcast. The, web, the webcast slides and the recordings of the webcast will be available on our website, www.waterrf.org. Um, please send email to Michelle Suazo for your um, PDH certificate, that's the continuing education. And there will be a survey at the end of the webcast, so please stay throughout the webcast. In our next slide, it shows you the input, where to input your web questions, and um, it's also where you put the um, questions for the Q&A at the end. Um, and then um, you could also download the presentation. The slides and the recordings will be available to um, WRF subscribers within 24 hours after the webcast. If you are having problems with the slides, um, you could contact us um, to send you um, a copy. Okay, so um, again, um, my name is Lola Olabode with the Water Research Foundation. I'm one of the um, program directors with the Research Services um, Unit, and I would like to go over our agenda today. Um, so our webcast is going to go um, from 3 p.m. Eastern Time all the way till 4 p.m. We have um, two great phenomenal speakers. Our main speaker will be Dr. Erin Simmons from the University of South Florida. And our second speaker who would introduce our main speaker is Dr. Carl Bibi with University of Notre Dame. Um, before we um, begin, we would have a live polling before the main presentation. And, um, and then um, Dr. Carl Bibi will go over the progress and activities on viral water quality, and then we'll have a Q&A um, session for 15 minutes before we adjourn. Um, there will be um, two poll questions that would um, require your interaction um, and will better help us um, assess the audience today. Um, we, we know that about over 325 of you are registered, so um, we, we're really excited to have this um, interaction. Um, before we get to our main presentation, we would do a live polling. So that's coming up next. So we have the slide on the live poll. Okay, we will be closing this um, poll in a few more seconds. Thank you. So now, I would like to um, introduce you to our first um, our first speaker, but well, really not our first speaker, our main contact, um, Dr. Um, Kyle Bibi. Like um, I mentioned, um, this is a partnership webcast, and this the focus on this webcast series is going to be on viruses in wastewater for a National Foundation. National Science Foundation grant, and this first one is on PEPO mild mortal virus, which is a viral indicator. Um, and so Dr. Bibi is an associate professor and the one ZEC Collegiate um, Chair at the University of Notre Dame in the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering and Earth Sciences. 
He completed his um, bachelor's in civil engineering from the University of Notre Dame and a PhD in environmental engineering from Yale University. He was previously faculty member at the University of Pittsburgh, one of our um, investigators during the Ebola um, outbreak. Um, so um, we've had several very exceptional products from interacting with Dr. Kyle Bibi. He currently leads um, research projects investigating microbial water quality, the persistence and disinfection of emerging pathogens in wastewater environment, and microbial communities in the built and natural environment. Dr. Bibi is also a registered professional engineer in um, Illinois. So without further ado, um, I turn the mic now on to Dr. Kyle Bibi. Great. Thank you so much, Lola. And thank you, everyone, for taking the time to uh, log in and attend our inaugural webinar um, highlighting emerging research in the area of viral water quality. So this webinar series is actually sponsored by the National Science Foundation through a career award to me, which is why um, I'm introducing it, even though I'm not the main uh, presenter today. And our goal is to communicate emerging uh, water quality research results and essentially encourage moving beyond E. coli as uh, sort of a primary monitoring target for microbial uh, water quality uh, by highlighting all the emerging tools that are coming out. Um, we're planning this webinar to come um, annually for uh, about four more years after this one, um, so hopefully uh, we can count on everybody and more uh, logging in to attend uh, future webinars. So with that, I'd like to introduce um, our guest speaker today, who I'm really excited to have, Dr. Erin Simmons. Um, she is an environmental microbiologist who's currently a postdoc at the University of South Florida, actually leading a, re a research project, uh, the Murrah Research Project in Costa Rica. Uh, where she's calling in um, to us uh, from today. She did her undergraduate at the University of Virginia and her graduate work at the University of South Florida and has uh, uh, numerous publications and awards, including uh, the U.S. EPA uh, STAR Fellowship and uh, a Fulbright Fellowship uh, previously. And she's um, uh, uh, been a leader in developing this tool uh, really pretty much since the beginning uh, that she'll be talking about today, this pepper mild model virus. And I think this is one of the leading um, potential viral uh, water quality indicators um, for use in our field. So I'm really, really excited for Erin's presentation today. So with that, I'll uh, turn it over to Erin for her presentation on pepper mild model virus. So before Erin um, gets on, we do have another poll just to get you all engaged and um, interactive so that you can start forming those questions um, for us um, before we get to our Q&A. So um, it will take only a minute to um, load and um, address that second polling question. It's really short. So I see that the polling question has gone out. We'll give it 10 more seconds to um, get your responses finalized. Okay, thank you all for that. And I think with that, we, without further ado, um, we would have um, Erin um, give her presentation.
Thank you very much for that presentation. Now we are at the Q&A session. I would like to um, call on Carl Bibi to, I'm sorry. Kyle, did you have um, some addition to this portion of the segment of our webcast? Great. Thank you, Lola. Um, and um, thank you, Aaron, for a great uh, presentation. Um, so um, I think uh, now we have time for uh, a few questions um, which have come in. And it seems like uh, probably the first question that uh, we're interested in addressing is uh, we have several different versions of, of a similar and related question uh, that basically have to relate to do with um, the geographic consistency of peppermild model virus in wastewater. And so uh, versions of this question have to do with community diet, um, uh, sources of the wastewater, uh, differences between different uh, countries. Um, and so um, I think the first, that's the first question that we're going to uh, address. And um, so I'll turn it over to Aaron uh, for that question. Thanks, Kyle. Um, so to, to begin to talk about PMMOV and its presence in domestic wastewater, I'd like to highlight that we really only know um, where PMMOV is found based upon where PMMOV has been analyzed. And so to date, from my um, understanding, domestic wastewater from Australia, Bolivia, Brazil, Costa Rica, Germany, Guatemala, Japan, Kenya, Nepal, South Korea, the United States, and Vietnam are all countries in which um, the wastewater has been tested and PMMOV has been found in the concentrations that we re previously talked about during the talk. And so as you can see, PMMOV can be found in a variety of different countries, those that are um, low income, middle income and high income countries, as well as countries that are found ac across the globe, right? And, and of course, with very diverse diets, um, specifically talking about the United States, um, I'd like to point out that in the 2009 study that, that we did, we tested wastewater from Alabama, California, Connecticut, Florida, Louisiana, Maine, Maryland, New Jersey, North Carolina, Oregon, and Washington state. And so as you can imagine, I think that the diets vary across the United States as well. Um, there's certainly more of a, a tendency to, to eat spicy foods in, in Florida versus perhaps maybe Maine. But nevertheless, PMMOV was found in consistently high concentrations that we, that we previously met, um, mentioned, anywhere from a million to 10 million per mil of wastewater. And so um, really, I, I can say that while PMMOV is dietary in origin, it seems to be found in, in these consistently high concentrations across the United States, as well as across the world. Um, with respect to at community scale or um, individual household scale concentrations, I can't answer that question because I don't know of any studies that have looked at that fine scale um, of PMMOV presence in those types of systems. Um, let's see here. What other aspects, Kyle? Am I missing anything from any of those um, questions? Yeah. So, so I think um, you you really hit the key points there. Uh, some maybe some details. Um, what sort of ranges are do you typically see? What are high? And then do you see any differences um, uh, with other trends that we might see with other viruses? One of the ones that's coming up here is maybe seasonal changes um, or, or other things that affect the concentration, or does it seem to be uh, constant across those differences? Awesome. Okay. Thanks, Kyle. So um, the concentrations that um, that we found in wastewater are, are 
a million to up to 10 to the 10 PMMOV per liter in untreated domestic wastewater. And so, you know, that's, that's spreading the range in which we would find other enteric viruses that, that are more than likely present at those types of high concentrations because you actually have an outbreak of disease. Um, with respect to PMMOV and its consistency, most studies were done on, on short time scales. However, there were two studies that were done that looked at the presence of PMMOV over uh, the course of a year in the United States, and there was no real fluctuation in PMMOV concentration. Um, and then in the 2009 study that we did, um, we looked at one specific wastewater treatment plant in Florida, and we measured it daily for two weeks, and we didn't find any significant fluctuations in PMMOV um, concentrations. And so um, I think I think that about sums it up for that question. Did I get everything this time, Kyle? Yeah, yeah, that's great. Um, Lola now would like to um, sort of take a, a quick break to send the uh, survey results uh, from our initial surveys back out to the audience and just quickly highlight those results. Yes, thank you, Kyle. I thought it was um, really um, exciting and you all staying on my want to know who else is on. Um, so from the uh, first polling question that you took in what sector do you work in, um, no surprise there, 33% of you are from um, the wastewater treatment plant um, kind of um, perspective, 25% um, from a drinking water and non-governmental um, organization. Um, that was a nice tie. 10% academia, 6.8% water reclamation um, facilities. I thought that was um, really um, great information, so you know the kind of audience that we have. And then the, for the second polling question, in your work, have you ever used a microbial indicator other than fecal indicator bacteria? Um, over 55% of you said yes, and 44% um, said no. So I thought um, it would be nice to take a break and share those um, survey um, results. Okay, and so now we can move to our next um, question. Um, we have several questions here. And what we're we're not going to be able to answer all of them, but we'll have our speakers kind of address them, and we'll share them with you um, on our website. So, um, great. Our next Thank question. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, Thank Carl, you, Lola. You okay. So, so another question we've gotten a couple different versions of, um, and I like the wording of this one from Anita Anderson from the Minnesota De Department of Health, um, is couldn't the virus just be coming from the land surface, not necessarily wastewater pollution? And I'm going to summarize that to say basically how specific is pepper mild model virus to wastewater or human fecal pollution? Um, and or could it be coming from agricultural or anim animal sources? Um, so I'll now I'll turn it over to Aaron to address that question. Thanks, Kyle. And and this is an excellent question. It's it's one that I've frequently gotten any time that I talk about PMMOV. Um, so with respect to PMMOV and it coming just from land sources um, or surfaces, when when you do have uh, pepper fields presence. To be honest, I don't think that we know the true answer to this question. Um, we've never had the opportunity to sample water coming or runoff water coming off of an agricultural pepper field. Um, but I can say that PMMOV is not always found in environmental waters, especially when known pollution sources aren't present. And so um, I think future research is really needed to understand the way in which you can use PMMOV in a particular watershed. And this kind of dovetails along with what um, the second part of the question that has to do with the presence of PMMOV in animal feces. And, and you know, just like we have dietary, um, dietary habits, animals also have dietary habits, right? And so um, PMMOV theoretically could be found in the feces of any organism that's consuming processed pepper products. And, and so 
access to human food products to animals um, varies by country, by context, et cetera. And so PMMOV in many countries has been found to be an excellent domestic wastewater marker. However, there are some countries, a recent study just came out this past week or last week rather, where PMMOV was used in Nepal and they found that the animals, the majority of animals were excreting PMMOV in their feces. And this was a huge shock and surprise in comparison to other studies that have been done that shows that very low concentrations of PMMOV are found in animal feces. And so I think that the most appropriate way to use PMMOV in a particular watershed is first to understand what possible pollution sources you have, also to understand the um, non-pollution sources of PMMOV that you may or may not have in your watershed, and then from there, go about using PMMOV in, in a responsible manner if it's um, an indicator that you would like to use. Kyle, did I get everything? Yeah, I think that that's great. Thank you, Aaron. So another uh, sort of hot button question that we've gotten a couple different uh, times is uh, different detection methods or, or what is the most appropriate detection method for PMMOV? And um, then there's different versions of sort of the time for processing uh, to detect PMMOV with this detection method and potential Im improvements to make it sort of field applicable. Um, so do you have any thoughts on that, Aaron? Sure. So the most, um, the most commonly used method to detect PMMOV is, is using molecular methods, um, be it either via PCR or quantitative PCR. Um, these two types of tests cannot distinguish infectious versus non-infectious viruses, unfortunately. And so this is, again, where you know, methods improvements are needed. Um, these types of analyses can be done rather quickly. It, you know, it's just a matter of concentrating the, vi the viruses in a water sample and then proceeding to, to the extraction of the genetic material and then the analysis using either PCR or qPCR. Um, I have colleagues that have been working on digital PCR methods, um, which are similar to qPCR. Um, so really in summary, the, the use or the detection of PMMOV with respect to water samples is using molecular methods. Um, as I mentioned during the talk, PMMOV can also be detected using amino assays, which are like those rapid dip dipstick type tests that we previously talked about. Um, and so, you know, right now those types of, of detection methods are, are restricted to testing either pepper seeds, um, or, or pepper leaf tissue. And so because um, these types of tests require a high virus concentration in order for uh, the virus to be detected, it's really important if we wanted to use PMMOV as a viral indicator and we wanted to adapt such quick amino assay type methods, it'll be definitely be necessary for those methods to be adapted in such a way that viruses in water can be concentrated and that the detection limit be improved for those amino assays. But right now, um, that's, that's like I said, it's a, it's a little bit of a pipe dream, but I don't think we're too far away from it. And um, sort of a follow on to that, Erin, do you have any insight into, into the cost of a single pepper mild model virus test? I'm not sure if there's any available commercially, uh, but maybe just in terms of uh, uh, reagents and things like that. That's a great question, Kyle, and, and maybe, um, so from, from what I understand, I don't know of any laboratories that offer PMMOV testing, and, and like you mentioned, there isn't any, any specific kit that you can just buy from Thermo Scientific or, or whatever other um, science product company that you can choose. Um, you know, for the most part, when we've been doing these tests, we're obviously doing them from a university setting. And so we're, we never just analyze one sample. And it's always cheaper to analyze a group of samples than it is to actually analyze an individual sample using qPCR. I would, if I had to roughly guess at how much it would cost to test one single sample for PMMOV, I would say on the order of maybe, what? Thirty dollars, um, more or less. Kyle, what do you think about that? You do a lot of qPCR. 
Yeah, if you well, of course, the the most expensive is 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 people time, right? And so when you only pay reagents or something like that, it might be five dollars or ten dollars. But on a commercial setting, I imagine that that would be more on the order of a hundred or hundred and fifty dollars, something like that. But I, I'm not aware that that's even available. Um, yeah, yeah. So um, definitely something to keep our eye on in this field. Another sort of batch of questions we've gotten is um, uh, relating to drinking water. So Pepper mild model virus as a process tool to understand uh, drinking water quality and drinking water disinfection. So are you aware of any studies or uh, results in, in sort of the drinking water arena, Aaron, Aaron for um, pepper mild model virus as a process indicator? So um, this is where a lot of really interesting work has been done. Um, with the use of, of PMMOV in drinking water and treatment. I personally haven't done those studies. Several studies that have, were excellent have come out of um, Singapore. And um, they've looked at a variety of different techniques for testing drinking water. And PMMOV in those situations has been very interesting because its persistence is much greater than that of, of norovirus and oftentimes of, of the commonly used phages that are also used to test treatment efficiencies. And so in those types of situations, um, PMMOV has been very useful in order to assess the entire treatment process and, and not just at a pilot scale or bench scale, um, but also as, as a full treatment scale. I'd also like to mention that oftentimes in low and, and middle income countries and, and even in emergency type situations, point of use different um, treatment systems are, are also important to make sure that the drinking water is indeed potable. And so PMMOV has also been incorporated into studies testing point of use um, drinking water treatment and has also shown to be quite useful. Great. Thank you, Aaron. And I think we only have time maybe for one more question. And so um, I'm trying to pick through here. Uh, actually, maybe maybe time for just two quick questions. One of the, the good ones that came through and is a common question we get, is PMMOV culturable? Uh, so is the only method detected molecular methods? And maybe as an add-on to that, Aaron, uh, do you know if it correlates with, uh, uh, if it's used, detected using molecular methods, as I believe it is, is it, is it correlate well with a uh, viable virus? All right, so with respect to infectivity, um, infectivity um, can be tested in a variety of different ways. It can be tested just by mechanically exposing um, where you think the virus may be in your sample to the leaves of the plant. You would obviously have to be growing pepper plants. Um, so that's one way to test infectivity. Also, those immunoassays that I, I mentioned that are used in agriculture um, also require that the virus be intact, the capsid itself. And so presumably if the, if the virus is intact, um, the virus is also in infectious. And so um, it's not a direct measure of infectivity, but um, it gets you a step closer than the molecular methods, that's for sure. Um, with respect of with testing PMMOV infectivity in, in environmental water or, or treatment process studies, I have never come across um, a study that has been able to incorporate an infectivity measure. And that's mostly due to the fact that the methods right now as they stand, um, we're just limited. And, and most people that are studying um, either process treatment or um, environmental waters don't have access to greenhouses and, and tons of plants. And so this type of analysis isn't frequently done. Um, Kai, what was the second part of that question? Um. And, and I was going to asking if it correlates, even if it's detected using molecular methods, are you aware of any study correlating it with infectious enteric viruses? That's a great question. And that's also a, a complicated question to answer. To my knowledge, um, you know, PMMOV is, is very persistent. And whether or not its persistence is also a reflection of the persistence of the infectivity of the virus, we don't know that answer, just like we don't know how other reference viruses that aren't um, easily culturable, for example, norovirus, how they're behaving through treatment systems because um, they're not easily culturable. And so 
um, based upon the study, for example, that we did in Bolivia, you know, we didn't see any PMMOV reductions in those wastewater treatment pond systems. However, when we looked at the enteroviruses, which is a, another group of enteric viruses um, that we were able to measure using culturable methods, um, we did find a, a difference in reduction and we found a, a reduction in both treatment systems. And so I think the short answer to the question with whether or not PMMOV um, molecular methods or results. Sorry, I'm not sure if you hear the thunderstorm outside of my house. Um, <laughs> um, so with respect to um, PMMOV qPCR results and, and whether or not they reflect culturable viruses, I think the short answer to that is, is no or likely not. However, I don't think that we've been able to run the types of analyses that are needed to really answer that question. Great. Thank you, Erin. So now I think in the interest of time, we'll wrap it up. We have the questions that were asked, and so we will do our best to, um, and uh, the attendees' emails, we'll do our best to follow up with attendees if there were questions that we really didn't get to cover. Alternatively, if you don't hear back from us because it was lost somewhere in the mix, uh, please feel free to send an email to either Lola, Erin, or myself, and uh, we'll try to get that to the right person to have your question and. Uh, answered. Thank you so much for attending, uh, everyone, and we look forward to another uh, successful webinar next year. Now we do have um, some follow-up, uh, wrap-up questions uh, to help WRF continue to improve their webinars. Thank you so much, um, Kyle and Aaron, for that wonderful presentation. Like um, Kyle just mentioned, we have three questions for the audience to answer so we could continue to improve our webcast in general and especially this partnership one. What kinds of um, comments and recommendations could you give us to make it more interactive, just in general, to improve on it? And um, like Carl said again, um, I know we don't have his contact information on screen and Aaron, but please feel free to um, send your comments, questions to me. Um, lolabody at waterrf.org. And for more information about the webcast, like um, we mentioned earlier, the recordings will be posted 24 hours. Um, so 24 hours from now, you see the recording of this webcast on our website. So please stay tuned. Um, like I mentioned again, this is the inaugural one of many series of um, Kyle's virus theme of viral water quality um, topic um, that he'll be addressing through his um, NSF grant. And with that, thank you, um, everyone. And that adjourns this um, section of our webcast.